Good evening, one and all. Welcome to this game between the Willie Bay Beacons and the Streatham Storm. I'm Adam Matman, and joining me for this one is Carl Wood. Carl, how's it going, my friend? Fantastic. Good to be here. Thanks for having me. Can't wait to see this one get underway. Yeah, great to have you back, buddy. Um, now, you were here last week and joined me on comms for the game against uh, Solihull Vixens, and Beacons were lucky not to get something from that game, weren't they? Definitely. I mean, they were in it the whole way. It was a physical affair, but they stood their ground and showed that they deserved to be in the uh, the elite division here. So, yeah. Yeah, and the gaps are certainly closing, aren't they, between uh, the Beacons and the, the so-called top teams in the division? Oh, absolutely. And I mean, this game here today, these are two teams that look very similar. So I imagine we'll see lots of hard pace uh, skating, lots of shots, everything. So it should be a good one. It should indeed, yes. Yeah. Streatham have two wins to their name already. Uh, one coming against Kingston Diamonds, the other against um, Guildford Lightning. They, uh, the only loss they have suffered was uh, at home to the Queen Bees, where they lost 3 nothing. But um, obviously, Queen Bees are stacked with GB internationals themselves, aren't they? Absolutely. And I mean, really, a 3 nothing game, that's not a bad score line when you're playing a team like that. So well done for them. Yeah. Now, um, I mean... Th they're a little bit of an enigma, aren't they, uh, the Streatham Storm? You're never quite sure which players are going to travel. And uh, missing for them is Ange Taylor, who obviously is a, a, a legend of the women's game, isn't she? Absolutely. But, I mean, looking at the players here, they, you know, they, lots of young players, uh, some smaller bodies out there. But watching the warm-up, they're all very quick. So, you know, as I say, there should be some great skating to watch out here today. 
Yeah, number 63, Isabel Whiteley plays for Great Britain, so uh, she's going to be very much the leader. She wears a C on her jersey as well. Well, I'm watching her taking shots on goal too. She's got a hammer, so watch out for her. Yeah, absolutely. We are underway then, and it is indeed Isabel Whiteley who takes a draw. It's Chantal Eyre who gets control of a puck. She's it's her first season at elite league level, having scored a lot of goals for the Southern Amazons the last couple of years. Steph Towns will control dangles right in front of her, uh, her own crease there. She's a uh, braver person than I am. I wouldn't have attempted it, but uh, she has got the skill to back it up, of course. As they'll enter the zone here. Ruby Newlands will chase. Interesting that they have mixed the lines up completely here with uh, Claire Turnbull out uh, on this top line with Steph as well as Ruby Newland, so uh, what well, interesting lineup they've gone. Absolutely, I mean, I think, you know, these are the games that you, you try to do this stuff, see what other different chemistry you can generate, you know, and good luck to them. But Steph's actually playing on D alongside Vicky Smith, with Abby Coulshaw playing in a customary position, so that is a complete uh, change then, isn't it? Absolutely, I mean, you said they were gonna be a little bit short on the defense today, so I mean, that's not a bad position for, uh, Steph to jump into. I mean, she's a center anyway, so she understands defense. So, you know, we should see some good things out of her. We should indeed. Attempted wraparound from Christine McLean. Forces a kick save out of Megan Craig as the storm will go close. I'll set up the play once again. I'll dig it out the corner. Beth Milne, oh, just sails under her stick as pass come to her with uh, speed, but they'll uh, chase this one down. Danielle Turnbull closing in. On the far side, the storm will control. Milne will go into the corner with Danielle Turnbull. It's the uh, Beacons and Becky Castlewood who almost comes out with it, but uh, controlled by Kelly Jamieson, South African-born player who spent last season with the Chelmsford Cobras in Division One. But uh, South African international. Uh, Pup comes through for Maya Lowe, who got player of the game last week against the Vixens. Will shoot from the blue line, forces a high glove save from Sarah Harrison, who's got the start in net this afternoon. Yeah, good, good play so far. It's definitely back and forth, and I mean, it's you know anybody's game at this point. But uh, you know, good to see that they've got some attack and some offensive time. So I mean, fingers crossed they'll get something real quick. Yeah, controlled by Ruby Newlands in the corner. Rachel Stockdale floats one in. It will be picked off by the Storm, who will clear the zone. Rachel Stocks will be the first one back there alongside Rachel Stockdale. So that's a. We're going to be confusing for us commentators as that sends around the board. It all oh, takes a wicked bounce and falls perfectly back for, uh, I think it was Murray wearing the number 30 jersey. Abby Coulshaw will control. Controlled in the corner by the Beacons. I'll dig it out. Almost picked off by Isabel Whiteley. She did get a piece of it, but it'll fall nicely for Ruby Newlands. A vital poke check by the Storm, but now Abby Coulshaw will enter the zone. Oh uh, yeah, we were able to get bodies back there, though, Carl, the Storm, didn't they? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they had took away the passing lane there, so I kind of trapped the uh, the beacons as they were coming in. It was a bit crowded, but, uh, you know, they've, oh, they've, they've kept in. They've still got offensive position, so not bad. Estelle will break out. The net certainly rippled, but I think that was more from Sarah Harrison's um, pad going into the net on the inside rather than the puck, but it wasn't far off as the uh, Beacons will look to try and dig out. Chantal Air will control sort of a half spinner armor there from the Isla White born forward. Puck comes off her skate and comes back out to Beth Milne. She'll control, floats one in, it will go around the boards and be controlled in the corner. Comes back out, controlled at the uh, the point by Kelly Jamieson. Chantal Air gathers, fires, comes off a stick. Estelle it will follow up, but pushing out is Steph Towns. She gathers it in nicely. Can she split the Streatham D? She's got a bit of support up there with her. She'll go it alone, goes onto her backhand, and then we'll cycle back round, get something in towards goal. Picked off, follow up though by Becky Castle Wood, who come crashing into the uh, low slot. Shot coming in from. Danielle Turnbull as well. It was a solid pad save by Sarah Harrison as it comes back out to Chantal Air. She'll poke forward and then Becky Castlewood doing well to get back as the storm will go for a line change here. Rachel Stockdale forward, picked off by Jamie Andritzi. Canadian born defender, shot comes in. And uh, again, Megan Craig doing well to hold on. That was Lucy Ebinger coming in there with a follow up effort. I mean, the offensive side of that play was terrific, but when uh, Streatham cleared the zone, unfortunately, 
Um, the Beacons were a little bit slow at reacting and getting that puck, that puck back up because Stratham was trying to change there and they had lots of open ice to kind of take advantage, but they were slow to respond to that. So they lost that advantage fairly quickly. They did indeed, yeah. Be controlled beyond the back of the net. Lucy Ebinger, who's from Leicestershire, floats one in just out of the reach of Indritzi. I think mean, Becky Castlewood had her tied up. That was good defensive play there by the forward as Ubi Newlands breaks out with speed down the right wing. Nice low cross, but Danielle Turnbull just couldn't get uh, wood on rubber there. Collected by Li Hao Chong, who carries out. He uses the board to help her there. Open is Lucy Ebinger, but poached up by Rachel Stockdale. Breaks the play up. Lucy will then gather in front of a Beacons bench, dump in, and will go for the change. But, uh, well, it's some good hockey out there, although neither of the teams really had a, a serious effort on net yet. But um, there's some good, uh, good breakouts. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they're finding a way to open ice up for themselves and, and get that puck moving. But it's just kind of reading when the other team changes to get that advantage twice now. The Beacons have kind of missed that opportunity. So, yeah. Cleared by Becky Custerwood into space, but it'll be picked off on the far side by Kelly Jamieson. Collected by Beth Milne. As the uh, storm arrive here with 13 players, one goalie, 12 skaters. Looks like they're only using 4D, so allows them the use of eight forwards as Ruby Newlands try to carry in. Steph Towns in this new role for on D. But, um, I mean, as well, perhaps if she's carrying an injury from last week, we saw her block a couple of efforts on the on the foot, didn't we? So maybe she's thinking that might, uh, might take the pressure off a little bit if she uh, can play on D a little bit. Well, I'm not sure about that. Being a defense, you're expected to block a few shots, so she can't be worrying about that today. No, that's a fair comment, really. As Estelle it will break down the right wing. Good defensive play by Steph Towns, who steals a puck back off her and very quickly looks to get uh, motoring up the other way. Quarterback in this unit, really, as she finds Abby Coolshort. Oh, yeah, Estelle Ip just able to get a touch on that to break the play up. We're going to get... Uh, I thought we were going to get a call there. I think it was just for the attempted uh, offside, but uh, Beacons will dump back in with Becky Kastner-Wood. Gets in behind the defender there, did well. Cycling the puck in the corner. Come back out with it with Chantal Air, who will find the storm forward there. Lucy Ebinger, number 56. Goes down the right wing boards. Caitlin Stock sticking with her. Comes back loose. We've seen the McLean with the effort. And then Jamie and Dritzi will take it into a corner. Normally is a, is a D, but you've been used as a forward the, this evening. Well, again, lots of change up. Ooh, and it's come back through there. It was a, a the shot coming in on the far side and almost being begged to put home in that, uh, that glove side corner. But Megan Craig did fantastically well to get back across there. Absolutely. I mean, I think she was the one that had the wherewithal and understood where that, that play was going. Everybody else was kind of stood still watching that puck. So well done on that goalie to keep that, her eye on that puck. Yeah, absolutely. Back underway then. In the corner, controlled by Murray. Work back onto the left wing position. Ruby Newton's trying to push out, trying to put some pressure on Kelly Jamieson on that far side. Shot comes through, another solid low glove save by Megan Craig, though, who uh, spotted that. And she's been in fantastic form this season, hasn't she? Two player of the game awards in a row and could have, could have made it three last week. Well, I'd say she's always the sharpest on the ice there. She sees what's coming and she, she gets her body in all the right places. Glove, hand, stick, hand. They're all ready. Yeah. It's going to be a busy e Oh, it's going to break out. I'll come back to that thought in a second as Ruby Newton gets in behind. It was interference, surely. As Ruby was played before she got the puck. That's got to be an interference call, I would have thought. Is it? Yeah, Beth Milne going to the box. Um, but Ruby's uh, pace causing problems for Storm D there. Well, she... Had that Storm player not interfered, that would have been a goal. That was just an opportunity for Ruby to cash in, absolutely. That's one where you say take one for the team, isn't it? Yeah, and I mean, the thing is, is that it's not a penalty shot, so that D player did the right thing. Yeah, former Whitley Bay player herself, Beth Milne. Started off with the Solway Sharks as well. 
And Seth Towns will control. She'll have to wait for her teammates to come back on side and then feeds Abby Coulshaw on the left wing. Abby will control, sends it across. So try to pick out Claire Turnbull on the right side. Steph Towns on the point, will gather in. Need to get some shots on net. I'll try and work this uh, penalty killing unit out of shape. Nice passing though by the Beacons as Danielle Turnbull tries to get in behind the uh, player. I think it's Li Hao Chong who was back there. Indeed it is as she gets it away. In the corner, gathered by Danielle Turnbull. Sends it back across to Abby Coulshaw. Steph Towns is open. She's calling for it, but Abby will stick with it and will take some shot to get on target from there. She'll get the return pass. Now it's slightly more open. Come off the backside of a player there and back out. And as Steph Ip will get a, a clearance again, only as far as Steph Towns off the board. So Abby Coulshaw, that will allow the Storm to make a couple of changes to his penalty killing unit as Steph carries in. Searching for that first goal of the season, although she's got plenty of points still. Uh, Becky Casterwood calling for it, and then the shot just looping up over the goal there by, uh, I think it was Danielle Turnbull who had the effort. Nice return pass from Steph to find Abby Coulshaw straight into the skate. It'll be blasted clear. Only as far as Steph, who cannons one into Isabel Whiteley. Out wide. Claire Turnbull finds Becky Casterwood, who steals in. Battling with Estelle Ip on the far side. Gathered into a corner. Daniel Turnbull finds Abby Coulshaw again. I think it was Isabel White. You've got to stick on that with 20 seconds left on the power plate. Becky Castlewood will control. Steph Towns is open, but they'll go back to the corner. Now they'll find Steph, but it was a wayward pass and it will force the Beacons player coach to retreat. Abby Coulshaw carries in with full nine. She'll have to delay with four seconds to go, but miscommunication there. Storm doing a good job of killing that off in the end. Absolutely, they were they were great standing their ground in the uh, off or defensive zone for them and just held them off. They ran out of time. Yeah, kick save by Megan Craig. Again, went to a, a nice position where there was white shirts as opposed to red. Uh, so Rachel Stockdale will clear, won't quite come out the zone, but trying to push out there and force the breakaway. Amanda McWilliams out there as well. Banked off the boards squeeze back in that will loop into the end boards and collected by Murray one time shot by Lucy Eubanger just sort of hooks it wide didn't, didn't particularly uh, get a good clean connection on that one no that was a bit of a ping pong shot there that one just kind of went wild over the net yeah she'll recollect now will Lucy forward at uh, Caitlin Stocks regathers on our blue line over to Rachel Stockdale stealing on though it's good for checking here by the storm as they try and capitalise on it. Both teams turning over here, but Ruby Newlands will supply a nice pass forward. Emily Luck gets a shot on, but it was uh, behind the back of the boards, or back of the net, I should say, off the boards. As uh, they'll enter the zone once again, nice kick save by Megan Craig again, as Isabel Whiteley tests her from distance. She'll control behind the back of the net. It's going to be a busy evening for Isabel. Doing the majority of the uh, work at centre. Well, absolute workhorse there, really, as Ruby Newlands will advance. Oh, a nice little tape there from uh, behind her, wasn't it? Backhand to forehand. Nicely executed there by the youngster. Helped get the zone and certainly created space inside that offensive zone. That was a terrific move. Just shows the skill that she's developed. Yeah, it really does as Steph Towns gathers. Chantelle Air putting pressure on her, but Steph shrugs her off. And again, a little delay. That will be dumped in by Maya Lowe on the far side. Into a corner. Maya Lowe goes in to help the two players battling in there. That's evened up at two each. Maya will come out with it. We'll find Danielle Turnbull who strikes the bottom of the goal frame. And uh, this is good, uh, good play by the Beacons here. They're battling hard in the corners. Absolutely. I mean, just some of this uh, cycling with the puck down low here and... You know, keeping that four check going is keeping them in control. And then Steph, who uh, just tried to get some of it on net there, only just wide of a goal. So, nearly catching the storm cold, but they'll break out here. Ricky Smith has to go one-on-one -on -one here. There's just about enough to force McLean wide, and then Megan Craig had that glove side covered off. Uh, took all that space away from her there, so she was uh, smart with the body and, and quick with the stick, so that just stopped a good scoring chance there. So, well done on the defense. Yeah, it really was. It's, uh, Claire Turnbull looking to, sorry, Danielle Turnbull even looking to burst through. 
Clearance by Vicky Smith off the boards to Maya Lowe. It's forward. Becky Castlewood will close down. Storm being hurried up there. Beth Milne in possession, almost getting caught by a former teammate there. Collected by the Beacons on the far side with uh, Emma Dixon. Oh, just under the stick of Abby Coolshort. Uh, we'll go again. Back to Rachel Stockdale. So Coolshort again. Whitley captain being pushed further back, but she'll hold on to possession here using her experience. Well, I'll say that she's still very young, but she's got a, a, got a lot of experience for those uh, young years. That's it. It's vet veteran experience there. So big games played in those skates. Yeah, exactly. Collected by Emma Dixon, and she's closed down. Cool sure again. Again, the beacon's being pushed back, but they're not afraid to sort of control around and play around in front of the net oh, as it comes off the board. Well, the forwards have been smart. They've been coming down and helping out the D, so any any loose bodies were, were picked up pretty quickly. So there's not a lot of shots going on on net. All the passing lanes are being taken away. So it's good good job for those beacons to, to be able to do that. Yeah, Claire Turnbull with an effort just being deflected away, away by Lee Hao Chong. But do you think that's something they've worked on in practice in uh, over the last few days, Carl? Well, I was at their practice on Friday, and it's absolutely one of the things that they're working on. So it's good to see. There you go. <laughs> As uh, Chantelair steals a puck in, will break out. Seth Towns comes across, gets enough on that to direct the pass away. Abby Coolshaw will dig out the corner. Sends it around, but it's going to be picked off by the Storm and Estelle Ip, who's one of the fastest skaters in the league. Comes through for Ruby Newlands. It sort of bounces off her somewhat, but it's picked up by Claire Turnbull and will feed Abby Coolshaw, who breaks in with just over five minutes remaining in this opening period. Seth Towns goes again, two shots blocked. Isabel Whiteley blocked the first one. Now the Storm will look to try and push out, but Becky Castlewood's the first one, tracking back. Slick passing here by the Beacons as they look to try and carry back in. Again, Becky, yeah, the tenacity and the speed she had to get onto the end of that pass. Well, it was just, just the read there by, by Steph putting it up high, deep in the zone. She knew Becky could skate on that, and, uh, you know, it, it hemmed the, uh, the storm in there pretty quickly. So, great play. Yeah, and she'll pick up again. We'll let Becky Castlewood fires, kick save, comes back out. More like a toe save there by Harrison as... Uh, Danielle Turnbull has a shot blocked. Steph, uh, sorry, uh, Becky even from the high slot. Over on the far side, Emma Dixon. Uh, pass is picked off. And she banked it off the boards. Jeremy Andritzi will carry through. Another one of the Canadian-born players on this Storm side. Uh, it's a collection of international base players, really, aren't they? And I guess when you're based in London, you can attract those uh, international players. Absolutely. And, I mean, it, it does uh, some great things for the game of hockey here, bringing different experience from different countries because all the training aspects that they get. And it's, it's nice to see it all come together in this kind of game. Yeah, it really is. As that one will clear and comes back out, they'll skate back here. J Kelly Jamieson, who I'm sure is normally a forward. And I'm sure she played there for Chelmsford last season, but being utilised on the blue line for this evening. Quick pass out the corner by Steph. Nicky Smith having to help it on its way. The puck will come out the zone. That will force the storm back. And good work by Claire Turnbull, who's forechecking well here and forcing Kelly Jamieson to hurry up her pass. It's controlled along the boards by Murray. Steph Towns picks up again over to Vicky Smith. Sends it back the other way. Steph will allow it to be controlled there and watch where it's coming out. Shot comes through and a nice glove save by... Not even actually come off the blocker there, Megan Craig, because she didn't gather it in, did she? As uh, carried in now by Ruby Newlands, but well defended by Kelly Jamieson. Read it well. Now she'll advance on that left-hand side. Ruby sticking with it. It's a good little battle list between those two. And uh, collected by Vicky Smith. But um, again, some, some nice play there over the last couple of minutes. Definitely. Both both ends, you know, that's the thing. And even the, the transition plays through the neutral zone. I mean, they're very smart with what they're doing. Oh, Isabel Whiteley picked up that, uh, that giveaway and just fired wide. I think uh, Ruby, um, Megan might even got a piece of it as it's pushed through. And now Becky will push out. And she stole it back and she finished. She will! Becky Castlewood with the goal. It's 1-0 Beacons. What a steal. That's, that's becoming classic 
trademark Becky Kasner with there. That's the second time I've seen her do that. Wow. She must be a joint top scorer with Abby Koshaw now. Well, that should bring her closer, that's for sure. That was tremendous. But she's, uh, I mean, fantastic uh, record over the last, since the beginning of the season. I'm pretty sure she's uh, a goal a game right now. Yeah, definitely. But the real impressive part about that play was that pass up through the middle to get it to Becky. And then for her to have her stick on the ice, be able to get a little bit of wood on that and put it in front of her to skate onto it. I mean, what a great play by that person who made the pass. Yeah, apologies. I didn't quite see who it was either. But uh, I certainly saw Becky Castle were breaking through. But as you say, the quick thinking of that pass. And Becky read it perfectly as she always, already, oh, sorry, always would. But um, anyway, collected by the... Beacons D and uh, Rachel Stockdale sent along the far side. I'm going to have to regain some composure after that uh, fantastic finish. But Beacons, I'm sure that's uh, the fourth time out of six games this season where they've taken the lead in the game. Let's see if they can hold on. Uh, Stockdale gathers. Fanned on the initial one and then uh, shot comes out, but well blocked by Caitlin Stocks, who I, I thought was excellent last week. And obviously, it's going to sound crazy when. Um, Jody Alderson Smith scored all four goals for her team last week, but I actually thought, aside from those goals, Caitlin defended well whenever she was on the ice against her. Well, and the thing with that game, it was a physical game, and, and she stood her ground. You know, she she was a workhorse throughout that whole game, and that's what you need, and that's how you're keeping that score line down low as they did. Okay, uh, it was Claire Turnbull's shot, just pops out the glove of Sarah Harrison. Comes back for Lucy Ebinger, who will uh, carry in on the right wing side. Just tries to get a reverse pass on net, really, or something towards there, and picked off by Steph Towns. And as I say, well, as you said, even, Carl, it could well be a masterstroke putting Steph back there with her vision and her composure. Well, and the thing is, is that she's a great skater in the tight spaces. As you, as you can see right now, like with what's going on, some of the players are bigger, stronger, but she doesn't stop. She doesn't give up, and she's got great hand-eye coordination. So, you know, you can feel confident with her. You know, if she loses a puck, she'll get it back. Yeah. Nice pass by Claire Turnbull to find Abby Cool short. Stolen back by Kelly Jamison, who I've got to say has looked very strong on D so far in this period. Yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, it's going to make it hard for anybody trying to get through. Yeah, well... Great way to end the period. We're at goal for the Beacons. We're going to take a short break. We will be back with you in around about three minutes' time, so please don't go anywhere.
Welcome back for the second period then between the Whitley Bay Beacons and the Streatham Storm. Uh, just before we get this period underway, there will be an ice cut between the second and third period. So there will be a, a slightly longer intermission than normal. So please don't go anywhere. We will be back. But uh, just to give you forewarning of that, it's something that Steph and the, uh, the club have pushed hard for to try and get an ice cut between periods because it, it certainly cost them in that third period last week with the, the penalty shot getting stuck in some snow. Claire Turnbull will take the draw. Abby Coolshaw straight away will carry down the left wing boards. Collected by Estelle Ip. Swift pass out wide to Chantal Eyre, who will advance forward. Been the leading scorer for the Silent Amazons on each of the last two seasons, I believe it was uh, well in excess of 50 points over uh, something like 30 games. But, uh, taking the challenge of playing in the Elite League this year, and it'll be Chantal who picks up that loose puck and will find Estelle Ip, but it's picked off by. Steph Towns, he works it back to Vicky Smith on the far side. Nice pass by Abby Coolshaw. Ruby Nunes on a breakthrough. Well defended, though, by uh, Li Hao Chong. But um, nice play again by the Beacons. That was a great play all the way through that neutral zone. The passing was perfect. It, it gave him, you know, opened up the doors to get into the offensive zone and, and set something up. The D just played that well, so they just kind of lost the opportunity to shoot. But, I mean, they got the zone. And they got the puck, so good for them. Yeah. Ricky Smith will collect off the boards, finds Seth Towns. Fresh unit out here for the Storm. Nice defending there by Beth Milne. Nice use of her body to, to get position on her to knock her off the puck. Yeah, it really was. As I say, Beth, who had a couple of seasons here. Prior as well before the... Uh, the rebrand of the club to become the Beacons. I think it was somewhere between the Squaws and Whitley Bay Ice Hockey Club, as it was called, wasn't it? Whitley Bay Women's Ice Hockey Club. It uh, picked off. Work took Beth South, but uh, she was a, a great fit here when she was in Whitley Bay. As it's carried down the far side by Kelly Jamieson, the shot's blocked well once again by uh, this time Emma Dixon. Jamie Andritzi on the far side. It's going to be Oh, I thought she was going to work it back to a point. Now it will come to her. Sent across into space, gathered by Isabel Whiteley, who I don't think has left the ice at the start of his second period. Back to Beth Milne. Winds one up. Oh, it was uh, seemed late through traffic, but uh, once again, Megan Craig making a stop. Absolutely. She, again, her eyes are on the puck. They never lost sight of it. And because of that, she was able to get in front of that. I mean, that traffic through the front, normally that would be a goal, but... She never lost sight of it, so well on her. Yeah, absolutely. As uh, Danielle Turnbull will bank it off the boards. Beth Milne will gather. Put under a bit of pressure by Amanda McWilliams, who's I thought did really well on that top line last week, alongside Steph and Abby. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, again, it was nice to see a little bit of a change because they took uh, the Ruby Rocket off that line and put her on the second line with Becky, but uh, she adapted and fit in really well. Yeah, works it back here. Oh, just stabbed wide by Isabel Whiteley. It was close by the storm. I always think Ruby and Becky play so well together anyway, though. Well, they do. They match each other for speed, you know, and they have a good vision of the uh, the ice. So, I mean, they, they get to those open areas and they support each other really well. So, you know, things are going to happen. Yeah, and you've got the, ex the experience of a veteran like Becky along with uh, the sort of youthful exuberance of Ruby, eh? they sort of contrast well, don't they? Absolutely. And one of the things that I used to say when I when I was coaching, it's like, how do you make each other look better? How do you make each other look really good out there? It's by finding the puck and getting the puck to each other and skating to those open areas. And that's what they do. Yeah. Maya Lowe slips the puck forward. Picked off, though, by the Storm. And they'll look to push out. Comes back through for Vicky Smith. She'll be closed down by Christina McLean. Work back. Shot comes through from Chantal Air. It was slightly behind her. She had to snatch at it, but uh, got a quick release out of that wrist shot all the same. Yeah, I mean, again, it's, you know, Megan being aware of what's going on, but unfortunately the Beacons kind of took their eyes off the players, a little bit of puck watching there, and a third player snuck in and picked up that loose puck. So they've got to be careful of that. It's getting a bit scrambly right now, and if they're not careful, it could kind of be, be, you know, tie game. 
Yes, Bobby Coulshaw breaks through the shackles to get in on goal. Ruby Newlands law oh, tried to drag back in the deep, but uh, great goaltending there by Sarah Harrison. He was able to poke it away, but it was a fantastic breakout by the Beacons. Oh, absolutely. And, and just to kind of, you know, go in two on, on one there and get the pass across and then shot on goal. But wow, great goaltending. It really was, yeah. She's been alert. She's played most of the games for the Storm, actually, so far this season. They've got Naomi Healy there as well. And uh, Steph Towns trying to work the puck into space again. Stalip will close her down. Puck clear to Ruby Newlands. Do you think that was the right pass from Abby? That she, well, the right, the right decision to pass to Ruby, or do you think she should have been a bit more selfish and took it herself? Well, she worked very hard to get where she was. Um, She'd almost lost control of that puck. I think she was a bit tired. She needed to pass it off to somebody there. So that was the only option at that point. So, you know, it worked. Yeah, it's a fair comment, yeah. As uh, it's worked away from the goal, it'll be the Beacons who will carry out with Danielle Turnbull, who's uh, working well on this second line with Ruby Newlands and Becky Casterwood. As I say, that Ruby goes for the change. Of course, she's on the top line. It's Maya Lowe who's on this second line. Floated in, low glove save. Well, that was a quick whistle because it looked like Megan had released it there. Yeah, I mean, she had more more beacons in there than, than Storm, so she was confident to kind of dish that off. But I guess the refs weren't going to have any of it. <laughs> they weren't, were they? No. <laughs> As, uh, Isabel White is going to take the draw. She's got Jemmy and Dritzi and Lucy Ebing on her wings this time. I say she is going to play a lot of hockey this evening. Li Hao Chong with the puck forward. Isabel Whiteley trying to get clear, just drags that one wide, but there's a lot of uh, net on the glove side was open there. That's it, exactly. It just inches, and that would have been, you know, hitting that corner and going in. Yeah. Up in the corner once again. It will come back to the point, fired back in. Collected by Isabel Whiteley with Emma Dixon doing a good job of helping along the boards. Storm looking to try and break free here with... Jamie and Dritzi. Nice hands from her going uh, backhand to forehand behind the net. But Caitlin Stocks read it, cut it off well. Lucy Ebinger will twist and turn in the corner. Sent it around the boards. It's collected by Becky Castle Wood. She will dart down this right wing, put under pressure by Isabel Whiteley to sort of got out out maneuver there. Used her body, didn't she, Isabel? That's that physical side of that, and I expected that from from that gal. She's. Uh a bigger player and, and kind of knows how to use her body for that kind of hockey, so good for her. Yeah, Becky Ward now try it up down the left wing side. Nice turn from her to create some space. And then again, that tenacity, whether she not give up, just keeps pushing forward, breaking through the, the challenges, through the sticks. Maya low, working well here. That's a nice pass to uh, Danielle Turnbull, who will go straight through the middle. Beth Milne push wide into the corner. Some great stick handling there, you know, it's just kind of hung on to it enough to create some space and then a nice backhand chip across to, to get that pass off. It was fantastic. Yeah, it was. It was uh, clear. It was uh, Jazz Wilson, who did play against the Beacons a couple of years ago in the playoff semi final for the Division 2, what's well, now on the Division 2 teams. But, uh, stepped up, and that's a shot from Steph Towns. That was an uh, absolute laser beam, but. Uh, I think the fingertip of Sarah Harrison just pushed it away from goal. Yeah, exactly. That's that's all she needed to get that up and over the net. But what a great shot. There's some power on that one for sure. Yeah, it was. Abby Coulshaw works it free for Ruby Newland. She'll fire. Oh, and it come off Jazz Wilson's stick. And I think maybe off the stick of Sarah Harrison as well. Yeah, that was defect, deflected high and wide. But you could see where Abby was going with that one. Great vision. Top left corner. She was had that one wide open for her. She did indeed. We'll get her face off in the storm zone then. Almost at the midpoint of the game. one nothing lead to the Beacons. Claire Turnbull will take the draw. She's been centering this top line so far this evening. Sent around the boards to Beth Mill. Collected. Well, got a piece of it there. Was uh, Steph Town Chantal Air will enter the zone, forced wide by Vicky Smith. Good defending from her. And then Abby Coulshaw trying to get the puck under control. Again, works it and will go back the other way. 
Almost picked off by Estelle here. There's a turnover. Estelle, uh, is Isabel Whiteley even who shoots and made that come off the blocker with Megan Craig there perhaps. Yeah, absolutely. She saw that shot coming and again she got that got in the way of it, deflected it wide into the corner. Work back to Abby Coulshaw, back off the boards, picked off by Estelle It played forward. Chantelaire will go forward, but it will be Steph Towns who gets there first. And she carries down the left wing boards towards Abby Coulshaw. You have to cut back. Gloves by Estelle Ip. She'll just fire it forward and allow one of her linemates to chase after it. Be Christina McLean who gets in there just ahead of Abby Coulshaw, but Abby doing a good job of tying her up and then the puck's collected by Becky Castlewood. Out well, wide. Hopped up on this near side. A lot of uh, communication going along there as the puck's up along the boards and then Ruby Newlands collects in front of the storm bench. She'll have to go to alone. One against three. Nice drag back. Gets in behind. That's a, That's got to have been brought down. Well, she was brought down there. It was a hip check, but uh, oh, that was borderline, I think. That was a hip check, classic hip check, beautiful hip check, but unfortunately illegal and not called. Yeah. Poor, well, missed call by the officials, but I mean, Ruby done so well to get in behind as well. Well, she just chipped it, chipped it around that player and got the foot on her, but unfortunately that player got the hip out and just dropped her to the ice. Yeah. You could hear the groans from the crowd from the non-call, it's worked back free by Isabel Whiteley. She'll carry out. Becky Castlewood almost got a piece of that on the way through. Lucy Ebinger will burst through that challenge, but uh, Rachel Stockdale doing enough to put her off. Now we'll re-enter the zone with Becky Castlewood. Or oh, drop pass for Maya Lowe. They'll have to come out the zone, but Beacons will regain with Caitlin Stocks. Caitlin will go down the near side, but nice, again, use of the body by Jamie and Dritzi to force that turnover. That's it, exactly. You've got to be careful how you angle yourself when you're trying to make a route move around these players because if, if you're not quick enough, they'll they'll take that, that skating lane away from you just by putting the body there. And they've done that a few times on this this sequence of plays here. So they've got to change that up a bit. Yeah. I mean, it, it's an art form to it, really, isn't it? It's, it's like you've got to be, a, it's got to be a subtle lean in rather than, than act, like trying to clean somebody out, isn't it? That's it, exactly. I mean, you see the big body checks and a lot of those players actually take themselves out of the play but just a, a slight you know angle of, of the body can just be enough to get in the way to, to stop them from you know the forward progression and that's all you need to do yeah it is kicked off in the mid slot by a stalip but couldn't call, yeah it couldn't call, well, in fact it wasn't a stalip it was uh Jillian fails and she'll uh, be tipped on by the storm Rachel Stockdale will gather a little over eight and a half minutes remaining in the second period. It remains one nothing to the Beacons as Isabel Whiteley is forcing turnovers in the offensive zone. She'll regain possession. Banked off the boards, comes back through to Estelle here. Tries to cut back to find Chantal Air. Caitlin Stocks going with her. And in the corner once again, they'll cycle it in there. Will the Storm. Oh, and then it comes off the heel of a stick there from Emily Look. Oh, it took a massive deflection. Megan Craig gets, I think she's got a hold of it. The lights come on, but I think the whistle had well gone by then. Well, I'm hoping so. I mean, that's that's uh, a play that should have been called dead. There was too much scramble in front of the net to, you know, for, for my comfort, for sure. So, yeah, yeah exactly, absolutely. So, um, well, We've got a face off in the offensive zone then for the Storm. 8.01 remaining in the period. As our DJ has uh, had a, a suitably um, put together Halloween playlist last weekend. He's got one that uh, all the songs have something to do with bonfire night. And uh, Proud Mary talking about burning. It's kind of like a bonfire, isn't it? As <laughs> uh, so the puck will go into the corner. And uh, we'll get a face off. It's outside the zone. So, uh, players will come back out. Looks like it's going to be uh, the Claire Turnbull line that will stay out there against the top line for the Storm. They're 
overworking it right now and they're, they're passing a little bit too much and they're just kind of sitting back a bit. They, they kind of need to tighten up again. I, I think let's get out of this period and then just restart. Yeah, yeah, I'd agree. It's not, we've not had uh, much or many chances since that, uh, that breakaway, really. That's 2 on 0. And Chantal Ayres, which is a play out wide right for the Stellip. Gathered by Steph Towns. Oh, it was almost picked off there by Chantal, who ready to play well. Puck come, come back through for Megan Cray. She'll cover up and we'll get a face off in the beacon zone. Now that was a bit dangerous, and I, you could see that Steph is sorry for, you know, making that choice. I mean, I like the fact that she she stopped and she wanted to make a change of direction, but she needed to do something a little bit different with that puck because there was just three players zeroing in on her, and she took it right through all three of them. She certainly did, as um, what is the designated second line for the Storm is out in there, second line for the Beacons as well. Christina McLean helping out on the... Uh, Center with face-off duties. Attempted wrap around. Oh, and the puck come loose, but it was saved by Megan initially, and then, uh, well, whistle on the play there anyway. Yeah, again, that was good. I mean, Megan was reading that play. That player tried to come all the way around the net and shake, shake the, uh, the defender off, which she did, and get a shot on that. But if you looked at that high slot area, it was Becky Kasner Wood and another player. They were just tied right up, battling away non-stop throughout the whole sequence of that play. So it's like good good for that centerman role there by Becky Kasner Wood. It was, yeah. And then the shot comes through. Jeremy Dritzi with an effort as well with a rebound, but couldn't beat Megan Craig. But they tried to go short side there. And, uh, well, Megan beaten uh, the storm forwards on both sides of that net. Well, they got to start helping the goalie out now. She's, she's starting to face a little bit too much rubber and in tight areas. So, you know, they got to be careful. Yeah, Storm are certainly working their way right back into this game. As you said, Carl, that, uh, that break can't come soon enough for the Beacons now, I think, as it comes through. Takes a deflection off a couple of sticks. BV Storm, who dig it out the corner. Ebinger to Andritzi. Oh, kept inside by Kelly Jamison, who fires. Oh, it's a deflect. I think she was screened, or it took a deflection, and it, it sort of ricocheted off the post and went back in. But that was a cruel blow on uh, on Megan Craig there. Absolutely, she didn't deserve that. I mean, she'd been working her her, her tail off to to keep them, you know, ahead of the game here. But I mean, this is the thing. It's it's been a scrambly game, and and you tend to overwork during those situations. You tend to make more mistakes, and uh, you know it just takes that kind of situation. And next thing you know, it's a tie game. It is, it is indeed. So 6.14 left in the period, it's tied at one. Abby Coolshaw looking to go on the attack. A couple of drag backs, fires straight at Sarah Harrison, no will hold on, but an offensive zone face off. Well, now let's simplify the game here. Let's get, get the offensive zone and start getting shots on net as quick as you can and then, you know, attack the net for rebounds or loose bucks, that kind of thing. Yeah. Quickly worked back by Abby Coolshaw, shot from Steph Towns, just fired wide, back off the of boards, head on the far side. And puck's tied up, two players from each side battling there. Puck's still moving, no. Work free by Abby Coolshaw. And then Steph Towns did well, lovely hands from her, fired just wide once again, but Abby Coolshaw trying to work it back. Have to go again as Li Hao Chong will work her into the corner. And again, work some space, fired just wide of the goal. But, uh, Beacon's not afraid to take the uh, the shots now. No, well, they've got it. That's, like I said, get shots on net. Anything can happen. Abby Coolshaw again. Nice hands from her backhand. Oh, it's looped in. It's gone in. And the Beacons restore their lead. Abby Coolshaw. Well, if it's not Becky Castorwood scoring this season, it's Abby Coolshaw. Yeah, we got a contest going on here now. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, why not? <laughs> it's all good for the team, isn't it? Well, that's it. And if it drives each other, then that's that's what they need. I mean, I'm sure it's not, you know, the first time it's ever happened. No, I'm sure, no. But uh, either way, the two top scorers this season have both found the net. And having been pegged back to one all, it didn't take the Beacons long. It was their first attack, really, wasn't it? They, uh, from the face-off draw, they set up, a, got an offensive zone face-off and scored from it. Well, and it's like I said, you got to get shots on net, and that's it. Get zone, get shots, and, you know, everybody go to the net, and that's what's going to happen. 
Yeah, Puck trickles its way through. Sarah Harrison will cover that one up, taking no chances with it, but sets up the offensive zone face off for the Beacons once again. And maybe just conceding that goal has woken them up a little bit. Well, I hope so. I mean, it's a good time in the game to get the go ahead goal again. And then, as I say, five minutes left in this period, get through the period, regroup. You know, you'll have the change to your advantage again, and it should, should be a better game for them. Yeah, Maya Lowe dancing through the low slot there. Storm looking to break out. Chantel Air will gather. Caitlin Stocks gets a skate on that. But they're going to say that was offside. I must admit I didn't get a good look at that one, but it must have been close. Well, that was it. Um, Stocks challenged the player coming in who didn't quite have control of that puck. So it put her over the blue line before the puck. So it was a good play by the uh, Beacons D. It was, yeah. Isabel Whiteley and Becky Castle will be the draw. Becky wins it, but the puck will come through for a Storm player. And Beth Milne, who helps it on its way. Collected by Maya Lowe, who's worked, we, we mentioned last week in commentary, Carl, she's worked really hard um, to get her career up and, and running. And it took off sort of just before lockdown happened, but she's now got a, a regular spot on this second line and uh, got play of the game last week. Yeah, that's it, exactly. I mean, it's like if you... you you do the work, you put the work in, you, you, you learn how to play the team game, especially this, this team's style of game. You know, you, you, can, you can find yourself playing elite hockey, which now all of a sudden she is. Yeah, she is, yeah. Well, and say very well deserved as Caitlin Stocks will gather in. Uh, she's landed head first into the boards. It seemed like she was losing her balance. She's getting up quite quick. She just seen her head just seemed to duck, didn't she, as the challenge came in? Yeah, I mean, she was in a vulnerable position. The Storm player actually did have a hand on, on you know, back of her neck between her shoulders there and, and pushed down. So being in that vulnerable position, she went down easy, you know. But again, as I say, she was vulnerable, face first on the boards. And, eh, could have been a penalty. It's not, but, you know, got to be careful out there. Yeah, the most important thing is Caitlin got up pretty quick and didn't seem to be, uh, to be hurt. That's... Uh Obviously, the most important thing is Abby Coulshaw collects off the boards. It's about Whiteley. Couldn't quite keep it inside. The Beacons trying to advance up the ice with Claire Turnbull, who gets a piece of it. Well, enter the zone now. Li Hao Chong will clear. And then Jermyn Dritzi down this left wing. Controls. Nice hands from the Canadian. Into space for Lucy Ebing, who collects off the boards. Steph Towns coming across. I can hear the Zamboni getting revved up. So we are getting an ice cut, which is good. 325 to go in the second period. 2-1 beacons. For boards collected to Abby Coolshaw forward. Poked clear by the storm. And we enter the zone with Christina McLean. Poke check from Ruby Newlands, who's back there defending. Well, you gotta play where you gotta play if the D isn't there, because we know we've got Steph playing that D and she'll be attacking defense. So somebody's got to cover for her. Yeah, Abby Coulshaw will enter the zone. She's got Steph with her. Nice drop pass. She'll fire, kick save, rebound. Glove save, comes back out again. But uh, Sarah Harrison will just dig through that uh, forest of legs to cover that one up. Yeah, that was sitting on a doorstep and there was nobody to take out the garbage there, unfortunately. Wow. Yeah, that's, that, that's just exactly where you need Danielle Turnbull because she's so good at reading them, isn't she? And crashing home uh, the loose puck in and around the crease. Definitely, but the thing is is that the Beacons have just created that opportunity. So keep doing that, and you'll have somebody there eventually to put it home. Yeah, Keller Jamieson, who will dig the puck out the corner. Picked off, and then Christina McLean trying to get in behind, but well covered there by Claire Turnbull. Collected by the Storm once again. Carried in by Fells. Into the corner once again. And then Christina McLean will go into the corner. 2.20 left in the second period. They're just out of a reach there of the Storm player. Ruby Newlands gathers in. Carries it out. Banks off the board. Couldn't quite get it away. Have to go again. Oh, now it'll fall to her. She'll look to turn. Almost got in behind. Now she will. Puck's just got away from her. Oh, vital poke check by Sarah Harris. And, and that was so unfortunate because the puck just got away from her at the vital moment. Yeah, and... and you could see the beacon player coming to the bench for a change where that puck came loose and came all the way to her and she was determined to get off the ice and that would have been enough to keep it in the zone. Uh, yeah. 
A minute 42 to go in this second period. Isabel Whiteley fires from the point. Well saved, though, by Megan Craig straight into a bread basket. Well, I think that's going to be the uh, the storm's bread and butter is a shoot from the shot from the point like that. Megan was square with the shooter and you know caught it right in the chest and left no rebound. So that was terrific. But that point's got to be covered so they can't get their shots off. Well, that's where she got the uh, where they got their goal from, wasn't it? From a similar position from distance. That's it. And they're they're putting bodies in front of the net so to screen Megan. You know, so if you can stop that shot, then you're not going to have to worry about the screen. Chantal Air with the effort, a low glove save by Megan Craig once again. As the uh, whew, some interesting fumes coming from Matt Zamboni. <laughs> we're, we're getting gassed up here. As, um, joking aside, as Chantal Air works it back to Jazz Wilson, oh, clears the zone. Now Maya Lowe will look to try and break, but a uh, quick skating. Li Hao Chong gets her there first. Cleared over to the far side. Mihal Chong will clear once again. Daniel Turnbull out wide. Daniel will collect off the boards. Got Becky Castlewood cut through the 2D. Oh, just. Oh, it's gone in. I'm not quite sure how it's gone in, but Becky Castlewood split the D and um, just stabbed it home at the back post, I think. Well, that's it. It was uh, Turnbull coming up the side there and put it across to in front of the net. And this is it. It's like I was saying, you know, get those bucks to the net. And if there's somebody there, there's somebody there to put the garbage home. And sure enough, that's exactly what they did. Becky Castlewood with the goal, uh, uh, second of the game. Over to you, Abby Coolshaw. It's your turn next. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm hoping it's one of those games. It's, they deserve it. Yeah, I'd be quite happy with a hat trick for both goals, to be fair. Absolutely. Let's let's keep it going. Yeah, as the puck comes through, it'll be controlled by Sarah Harrison into the final minute of the second period. It'll be another offensive zone face-off. And, and really, we, we were saying the pressure was coming on the Beacons. They were looking to, couldn't wait for that break. Uh, they give up the goal, but then got back ahead a few seconds later and then got a little bit of a, a cushion now. That's it. Now, they can't sit back on it. They've, they've, they've still got to do the right things. They've still got to play the safe game, but they've got to help Megan out here on, on goal. You know, she's, she's kept them in this game, and, and they've got to do their part now to, to, to bring it home as a win. Yeah. Worked across, went through the crease and back out. Beth Milne will get there first, forward and cleared it will be Rachel Stockdale to gather with 28 seconds left in the period Christina McLean won't quite be able to gather it in Beacons will push out Becky Castlewood putting the afterburners on to get in behind Kelly Jamieson almost gets it in the control gets, still gets the shot on net still was able to get something on it even though it looked like she'd ran out of real estate but uh, gets another offensive zone face off Carl she was she is bound and determined to win that race. I mean, she got there, got got a stick on that puck with with somebody hanging off her shoulders, but she dragged it all the way to the net just to trying to get it five hole looked like a little bit of a rebound, she, but she was still there to get a stick on it. Outstanding. Yeah, lovely pass by Vicky Smith. Tried to be steered on net by Steph Towns. It just uh, bounced didn't fall for it. Isabel Whiteley will dig it out the corner with. And it's uh, Claire Turnbull going with her. That will do it then for the second period. Um, well, a fantastic uh, finale to that period in the end. Well, that the last 10 minutes was definitely the Beacons game. They did what they needed to do. And even just to finish off this, the end of the, the period here, they, they were in the offensive zone, pressure on the defense, and they couldn't, couldn't get it out of the zone. So it's a great way to finish the period, and, you know, come back with that energy for the third. Yeah, it really is. We're going to take a break then as they cut the eyes. We'll be back with you in, I would say, around about 10 minutes' time. So please don't go anywhere.
Welcome back to Hillheads as it's currently Whitley Bay Beacons 3, Streatham Storm 1. And uh, well, we've had a nice Kurt Carl, so uh, the girls have been after this for some weeks now and they've finally got one. Well, that's it. I mean, I think it's fairly dry, which is, you know, a good thing to see. So that'll speed up this game, that puck will fly out there. So it should be a really good, exciting period. It should, yeah. So uh, Storm, who looks suitably charged up now, having had that uh, rest, been able to regroup, have fallen two goals behind, but Ruby Newland sends it across. Come through on, an, on another day, might have had uh, a couple more penalties or possibly even a penalty shot for uh, some of the challenges, but it's not quite gone her way so far, the Ruby Rocket. Well, she's working. She's she's doing what she needs to do. I mean, that was less than 15 seconds, and the Beacon's got a shot on net, so that's a great way to start a period. It certainly is, yeah. Puts a marker down as uh, the fast skating the Estelle will break out. Chantal Air gathers, makes it behind the net. Looking for a passing option. Isabel Whiteley fired through traffic, but Megan Craig just edged it away with the outside of the blocker. Almost uh, crept out the zone. Well done by Steph Townsow, and then she slips it forward for Ruby Newton, who push out, regathered by Chantal Air. forward to Steph Towns, who will go forward, rise to challenge, fires and this is the scores! Towns is on fire, your defence is terrified, it's 4-1 Beacons. Well, what do you know, see that, step across that blue line and let her rip, wow, what a shot, outstanding. It certainly was, yeah, and well, as you say, Carl, what, what, way to start a uh, third period not even quite a minute on the board and it's 4-1 59 seconds and they've got another goal outstanding keep it going yeah Steph's first goal of the season that's going to be a huge weight off her shoulders I know it was uh, it was weighing her down she it, she's a fantastic goal scorer and she does pride herself with the number of goals and points she has so that's, that's something that's going to be a, a huge relief to her well, and that just goes to show she can score from anywhere on the ice. And I mean, what a terrific play. Let them get a goal back then. As uh, hacking and slashing going in front of the net. I'm just trying to see who it was who got the final touch. I think it was Christina McLean. Indeed it was. So, uh, yeah, she was... There was a lot of pucks going in there. Sorry, a lot of sticks going in there fighting for that loose puck. And they were able to stab that one home. And, well, what a response. And as you said, we're in for a good... Uh, final period that's uh well two goals in what 17 seconds or something yeah exactly and i mean that was just the beacons kind of not being able to get control and contain the uh the storm down low and it was just somebody being in front to put the garbage home so that's it yeah as uh they'll go again now the storm gathers it deep behind the back of the net oh what a nice layoff by lucy ebenger carried in by christina mclean as caitlin stocks goes with her Control beyond the back of the net. Becky Castlewood will challenge her, but still with the storm getting caught under some skates there. And then it's cleared by Rachel Stockdale over on the far side. They'll continue to carry out. Maya Lowe doing a good job battling along there. Puck falls for Jeremy Andritzi. Claire Turnbull comes across, as does Caitlin Stocks. It's still with Andritzi and takes it into the corner. Puck bounced up on Lucy Ebinger there. Jazz Wilson steps up, keeps it inside, but regathered by Isabel Whiteley the main creator-in-chief for the, the Storm. Gathered on this near side. Storm actually keeping possession well in the offensive zone here. Still on a mission, really, to get them goes, those goals back. And uh, Isabel Whiteley will gather. Almost picked up by the Beacons. Tipped just wide of the net by Lucy Ebinger. And then again, that's Rachel Stockdale brought down. Attempted wrap around perhaps, but well read by Caitlin Stocks who come across to cut off Estelle. Puck just falls behind Daniel Turnbull. Li Hao Chong fires. It's it's her own player, I think. I think it was Lucy Ebinger who took the full force of that effort. Puck just staying on the blue line. Now it will come out. And uh, Daniel Turnbull will push out. But um, frantic action in the uh, beacon zone there. Yeah, it's that scrambly hockey again that's so hard to play. And I mean, you could see that they, they just couldn't quite get a stick on that puck. And each time they did, they didn't really get control and give it to their partners. They just put it on the sticks of the uh, the storm. So it's, it's frustrating hockey to play. I know I've been there and it's just, you know, you're working hard. You're almost working too hard, but uh, they survived. Yeah, they did. Uh, Steph Towns, nice handsome hit. 
fires. Oh, glove save by Sarah Harrison. It was a good effort by Steffo, trying to pick out that to bottom corner. Well, I think the goalie's kind of keyed in on Steph there. She knows she's going to shoot when she gets a chance, so she's she's just ready. And she's got a nice quick glove hand there to kind of keep that one out of the net. So we'll see what happens next. She's played well for a while, hasn't she, Sarah? She's made some really smart stops. Absolutely. I mean, there's been quite a few shots on her right now. So, I mean, you know, she has played some really good hockey. Yeah, she has. Beacons trying to crowd out the neutral zone. Chantel Air will carry in. Vicky Smith going with her. Steph Towns will clear. Still with Ruby Newlands. Runs off the boards, comes back out the zone. All be cleared and then gathered by Ruby Newlands on these near boards. Out wide to Steph Towns. Chantal Air gathers off the boards on the far side. Nice drag back from her, gets a shot off, blocked. Becky Castle, what I think it was, who blocked it. She was certainly the one who pushed the puck away, though. Tries to collect off the boards. And then nice work from Abby Coulshaw, who doubles up on this near side. Estelle will carry forward. Goes past the challenge there. It's a transitional hockey that's hard to play. It's like trying to, you know, not be on your heels, but to be able to get it out of the zone and, and get control. And this few sequences here, they've struggled with that. So it's... You know, just trying to shut him down a bit and get that control. These air passes through the middle is what's going to make life difficult for them. Yeah. Nice pass by Steph Towns to release Ruby Newlands, who fires, and the Ruby Rocket makes it 5 2. And what a pass by Steph Towns to pick out Ruby there. That was fantastic. Again, it was just that, that transition through the neutral zone with control and headman in that puck, and Ruby was there, and just a perfect pass right on the table. It was, and um, well, still plenty of time to go. Just over 15 minutes left in the game, but Beacons with a free goal advantage once again. Becky Castor Woods line will come out. Caitlin Stocks over to Emma Dixon. Jamie and Dritzi put in Emma under pressure. Puck goes into the corner. Again, the storm look fired up and looking like they're ready to get back, well, get one of the goals back straight away as Maya Lowe will clear over on the far side, Kelly Jamieson. And nicely worked by Becky Castor-Wood. Pass out wide to Danielle Turnbull who fires, ooh, only just wide of that, that post. Hey, did the right thing, you know, get it to the net if you can. Just went a little bit wide, but whatever, you know, I mean, you got to get your shots when you're there. You do indeed. It comes across to Caitlin Stocks. Puck getting caught up on the near side so it's too well two of each team got in there up along the boards right at the end of the beacons bench becky castor woods in there for the beacons isabel whiteley trying to come loose gets caught under the skates of the official beacons trying to get it clear beth milne pokes it back towards the uh, face-off circle and then it's cleared by maya Logue. beth milne gathers in the neutral zone picked off though by the beacons and maya Logue once again gets a shot on net deflected away i'm not sure if it was a um, Isabel Whiteley or one of the defenders but somebody got it, it might have been Kelly Jamieson who got the stick onto that as Vicky Smith plays it out into the corner collected by Maya Lowe with Kelly Jamieson going with her, Abby Coulshaw steals the puck back as, uh, again nice work from Abby off the puck there. Absolutely I mean she knew she wasn't going to quite win that foot race to it so she just quick lift to the other player's stick and uh, you know, change the complexion of that play for the, uh, the storm yeah, it was as they'll uh, burst down this left wing side. Isabel Whiteley into the corner. Vicky Smith just gets there first, but she's tangled up in the corner now, trying to work the puck clear, which she'll do. Claire Turnbull will collect beyond the back of the net, banks it off the boards towards Abby Coulshaw. Abby will turn and look to get it away. She's brought down on the way through. Shot from Lee Hao Chong's block by Claire Turnbull. Ruby Newlands, oh, fans on the uh, attempted fast pass, but she'll find uh, Claire Turnbull out wide right. Claire pass just behind her, comes out the zone. Steph Towns will have to hold on and well, hold on to possession here. Vicky Smith off the boards into the offensive zone. 12.40 remaining. It's 5-2 Beacons. The largest lead they've had of the season. As works back loose to Chantal Air. She'll not carry through the neutral zone. Asalit will help her out here. 
Tries the return pass just behind Chantel, and it will allow the Beacons to break out. Two against one. Ruby Newlands to find Danielle Turnbull. Danielle gets something on net, and it's crept in. It's gone in. It took a cruel bounce off the, uh, I don't know if it was off the back of the skate there of Sarah Harrison, and it just trickled its way over the line. The puck had legs, but uh, you don't buy a ticket, you won't win a raffle, and that's what Danielle did there. Absolutely. Ah, oh, good for her. That was good to see. I mean, again, it's you put pucks to the net, anything can happen. And I mean, they had momentum on that play. And I mean, Ruby was busting loose on the far side. The pass was what she was trying to do. But I mean, hey, the puck had a mind of its own and said, no, I'm going in the net. Well done. Yeah. 6-2 beacons. Work back to Emma Dixon. Well, as I say, coming into this game, Storm and Uddy lost once, and that was at home to the Queen Bees, which is uh, far from uh, embarrassing to keep it to just a free goal margin. But currently, this is their heaviest defeat so far so in the early stages of the season. But Beacons, who uh, was really ex getting closer each week, and I think they always had a performance like this in them. It was just a matter of time, wasn't it? Absolutely. They're, they're just waiting to break out. And I mean, the. Uh got the right combinations on the ice here today it looks terrific yeah Becky Castlewood doing a good job there of breaking the play up and then the smart stop by Megan Craig as Isabel White he tried to crash on the rebound that puck just sails under the stick that will force the uh, Streatham D to check back Kelly Jamison and Beth Milne it will be Jamison who collects from Sarah Harrison and the South African born player will carry forward controlled by Steph Townsend as she steals it back Amanda McWilliams will push out. No icing call there. That's 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 good to see. I mean, this it's the second one I thought could have been an icing, but uh, no no arms have gone up to indicate otherwise. So whatever, we'll play it. Well, we will. Yeah, I, I did hesitate there for a second because I was sort of expecting that, but uh, in the end, as you say, Carl, not not called. Could this be another one? That one surely, but no, it's going to be waved off once again as uh, Emily Luck closes in. 10.29 to go in the game, 6-2 beacons. Abby Coulshaw will control with Christina McLean closing her in. She'll be forced to track back. Of course, this is the uh, last game for the beacons this year. They'll have a two-month gap before uh, returning to the ice in Jan early January. So, uh, I mean, that, that break's almost come at the worst possible time now, hasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. You don't want to be taking breaks when you're getting your momentum and you've, you've got some real team dynamic going on. Yeah, effort by Steph Towns there as it just goes across the face of goal. Beacons B are in action next Saturday, though. They've got a couple of games coming up over the next few weeks. They're taking on the Grimsby Wolves. So, in, uh, so please do join us for that one as the uh, Beacons go on the, the road for their first away trip of the season. That's a 10 past one face-off, I believe. So please do... Tune in for us at around about 1 p.m. Uh, controlled behind the back of the net. But yes, whilst uh, Beacons A are having a couple of months off, Beacons B season just about starting to take off between uh, now and Christmas. Beth Milne will gather, sends it across to Kelly Jamison, forward to Isabel Whiteley, who will tip in and chase. Gets there first, collects off the boards with Steph Towns going in there. GB teammates, of course, they know each other. As... Uh, Kelly Jamison shot, comes off a skate, and then it's just stabbed wide of the goal from Jamie and Dritzi. Estelip with the challenge, but Steph Towns, who, as I say, it's that, that reshuffle has been, uh, it's been a master plan for Merck playing on D. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's great to see that uh, agility and, and puck control down low for the Beacons. I mean, they've got some great defensive players, but it's, it's, it's nice to see uh, another dimension to the defensive game. It really is. I mean, I think that's probably been... The problem they had last time they were in the Elite League was they it was trying to bridge that gap between the defensive unit and the offensive, like the forward line. And um, I mean, Steph's done that fantastically well, and maybe negating a little bit of that loss with, with um, Casey Trautman in Sweden this year. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I, I, I'd like to see if they if they continue to go this route and see see how they look against some of the other teams there, especially on the away games when you know they're going to be stacked benches. Yeah. Nice play at the high slot. Abby Coolshaw gets a shot. It's just kicked away by Sarah Harrison. Good use of the pads. 
control beyond the back of her neck. Christina McLean has Claire Turnbull tied up behind there. Comes forward for Jamie Andritz on the left wing. Picked off by Claire Turnbull as well, who's had another strong game for me, Carl. Ah, definitely. I mean, just the wherewithal to kind of, you know, see where these passes are going, pick them off, and, and be able to put them back into play. Yeah. I mean, look at her skating. She's a great skater. Yeah, as you always say, Scottish players generally are good <laughs> skaters, aren't they? Well, yes, I had this conversation earlier today. It's like, you know, you're kind of born and made to skate. Yeah. Out of the corner comes a cross, will fall to Maya Lowe, stolen by Isabel Whiteley, though, with 7.20 remaining in the game. Shot comes in, just wide of the goal, comes back off the boards to Danielle Turnbull. Over on the far side, and a battle with a loose puck, it will work back to Jazz Wilson. Collected by Lucy Ebinger. To Becky Casterwood, who's in a deep position right now, but will clear the zone. Allows her teammates to push out. 6.52 remaining, 6-2 Beacons. And then collected by Danielle Turnbull, her effort is blocked by Stretton Forward coming back. I think it's a stellar. Oh, no, it's not. It's the uh, it's a play on the far side. Gillian fails. Nice play there by Becky Castor Wood as she cut through the mid slot there. Got the shot on goal as well. Absolutely. I mean, oh, and Townsie's just got her second one. Drilled it from uh, from the high slot, and that's seven two. Uh, a bit like buses, Carl. You wait for an hour for once, and the two come along at once. Absolutely, and I mean, this is a great play by everybody on the ice at that point because they kept the puck in the offensive zone and they they were making the storm scramble. They they weren't sure where that puck was going. They weren't sure who to cover. And then when just when they thought that puck was going to come out of the zone, there's Steph putting it right back in and it, in the net it goes. Yeah, Storm have called a timeout then. So with just under seven minutes remaining, down by five goals, it's, it's a long way back from here, isn't it? Absolutely, but I think for the Beacons, I mean, it's it's nice for them to have, you know, a game that is, you know, a game where they put a few in, like it's it's a very decisive win, and that really helps your confidence going forward, especially in the elite league. Like, this is a historical game as far as I'm concerned for the, for the Beacons today. It is. I mean, if you consider and compare the way the Beacons were two years ago, the defeats haven't been by double figures margins like they were back then, and... And back then, I think the first win came, what was it, March time. So this has come a lot early in the season. That's it. And I mean, that's what you want. You want to be, you know, competitive at the right time and, and show that, you know, you are, you are there. You, you've got confidence. You can play with anybody. And you've got a style to your game, which they clearly have. They have, yeah. As uh, Beacons will follow the puck into his zone. 6.08 remaining. Storm regather possession. Tipped on by Chantal Air. It's going to be gathered by Vicky Smith, though. Vicky will control off the end boards. Estelle will gather in, sends it back across. Picked off by Steph Towns, who now is also on a hat trick. Nice pass towards Emily Luck, who will chase down. Out of the reach of Kelly Jameson, but she'll recover and regain possession. Kelly will carry out. Pass out wide. Picked off by Claire Turnbull. Forward. 5.40 remaining. 7-2 Beacons. It's, uh, as I say, it, it's been tough games in some ways because the Beacons have played well without getting their just desserts, but, well, they've come home to roost today. As Emily Luck will clear. Falls nicely for Claire Turnbull. Switches a play out wide to Amanda McWilliams. Out wide to Isabel Whiteley. Defended well by Vicky Smith, who did just enough there to get a stick on that. Absolutely. She knew where she was going, and she took that lane away, both, you know, body position and stick position. Cleared nicely by Megan Cray, just sweep that clear. Or was it Steph Towns, actually, was in the prone position? What was one of them who got it away anyway with 4.32 remaining? Sorry, apologies, 4.52 remaining. Not all the balls have been replaced in the scoreboard. So did Steph just go down a block a shot? Is that what we were talking about before? I think so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cleared on the far side I did joke before with uh, dad Paul about uh, had, uh, had he pulled in one of his former teammates uh, Rossi 
who, uh, Dave Ross, who used to play for Warriors and was a renowned defender. And he says no, because if he had taught her anything, she wouldn't have been, at, wouldn't have kept out of a box. <laughs> so that's a very good point. Uh, uh, Rossi's the uh, all-time leading penalty minute holder for the Whitley Warriors. So probably a good idea he didn't uh, <laughs> get on the ice and uh, teach you a little bit about D. Teach you some of the bad habits, yeah. eh? <laughs> but all uh, all fun and good natured, as uh, as Paul knows as well as I do. At uh, what a player Dave was. Over on the far side is Ruby Newlands, stolen back by Kellen Stocks, who did a good job there. Out wide, Storm keeping possession. Now the Beacons will get it clear, and they'll push out as well. Where Ruby Newlands will get there first. Collects it behind the net, it's got time, oh, just under the stick of Abby Coulshaw, maybe just, she come in with such speed to collect that puck, just maybe didn't have a chance to slow down. No, definitely not, but I mean, it's nice to see them coming in with that kind of speed. I mean, this is, this is fast hockey. So let's, let's see everybody. That's good, and that is the hat-trick marker, isn't it, for Steph Towns. She really is on fire, 8-2. Well, when we talk about speed, you know, they're, They've clearly got it. They're making it work for him here today. And that is a huge, that will be a huge weight off her shoulders now. Not just getting that one goal, but getting a hat trick. She's back to her goal scoring best. As as a defense player. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. <laughs> she leads a scoring race amongst defense. She does indeed, yeah. It's normally Hips McGee who does that, but it's, uh, it's, it's definitely Steph who's got that on it so far this season. Ricky Smith gets it away over the blue line. 3.02 remaining now. I mean, it, it shows really that, you know, just how perhaps unlucky they were in recent weeks. I know against Solihull last week with that penalty shot had that had gone in it would have been 3-3 they wouldn't have got the empty netter so I mean that you know, could have been an extra point it's it's fine margins isn't it sometimes you just need a little bit of luck that's it absolutely I mean it happens to the best teams too sometimes the bounces don't go your way and you're forever fighting it all game long but it's no indication of you know you being a good or a bad team it's just luck puck luck yeah I mean when I think it's safe to say that the Saudi Hall Vixens and the Queen Bees are the best two teams in the country um, both games against them in recent weeks, it's taken a GB international, senior GB international, to score four goals to be the difference in both games. Yeah, so I mean, you've got elite and then you've got elite, and that's that's what that player's all about. So I mean, we're not doing too bad at all. No, we're not. Jody Alderson Smith getting four goals last week. Rachel Cartwright scoring four herself a couple of weeks earlier for the Queen Bees, and those goals did prove a difference in both those games. Not to mention Katie Marsden's performance down in Hull. As it's uh, kept inside, I think they delayed there, thinking it might have been offside. Comes back across in the middle of a line change there, the Storm. Beacons are going to carry in less than two minutes to go. Estelle out wide to Chantal Air. Back to Estelle plays the puck out wide. Chantal Air looks over her shoulder to gather him, looking for a passing option. Picked off by Ruby Newlands, who tries to push out into the corner. Nice cutback by Chantal Air. McLean scores. And that makes it 8-3. It was well worked team goal, that. Yeah, and they took advantage of the, the miss pass there by the Beacons. And, I mean, that's all that was. They gave them that, and they had left the player alone in the high slot. It was there at the right time, at the right place, and just put that home over the, over the shoulders of Megan, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. A goal is never like giving up goals, even if in this circumstance it's not really going to make too much of a difference to the uh, scoreline. But uh, you know, obviously, goalies love their stats, don't they? Absolutely. But I mean, it's it's when you when you've got a scoreline like this, it's easy to get a little bit soft and complacent and just kind of, you know, oh whatever. You're a little too lackadaisical, and you've got to play right to the last whistle, you know, regardless of the score. Indeed. Yeah. Third period hat trick by Steph Townsend as Estelip cuts into the offensive zone. Nice blocks effort by Emma Dixon and then Megan Craig helping it on its way into the corner. A minute 12 remaining. 8 3 now to the beacon. Steph, uh, sorry, Abby Coulshaw even will find Ruby Newlands. Comes back in, storming on offside position. Claire Turnbull regains position inside the final minute. 
uh, a final minute, but I'm sure the Beacons will enjoy. They'll not want this game to end as uh, it's worked forward by Emma Dixon. Picked off by Abby Coulshaw as Isabel Whiteley cleared. Abby will delay, comes off a stick of Ruby Newland. She'll chase it into the corner with 37 seconds to go. Back to Abby again. And now Steph, who's up from the back. Collected by Estelle Ip, who will race in. Two against one, picked off though by Rachel Stockdale. Good defending from her, cut out that passing lane. There's a storm set up behind the back of the net. Becky Castlewood gets the clearance on it, 15 seconds to go. Ruby Newlands will feed. Steph Towns is going to chase after this one. Beth Milne is going to go with her. What a great foot race. It was, two old teammates there. Wow. Jeremy Dritzi will clear to Ruby Newlands in the neutral zone. That will do it then, an 8-3 win to the Beacons, their first win of the season, and a much, well, much needed one, but very much a deserved one. Well, that was a well-deserved win. I mean, your leadership, they, they, they set examples for everybody on that team, and everybody played, you know, collectively and, and did all, well, did a lot of right things to get that. So well done on the Beacons part. Yeah, um, well, player of game I'm gonna but before I ask you this I'm gonna say Becky Castor Wood for the beacon straight off well it's it's a it's a hard one I mean I, I think Megan kept them in there you know her goaltending was fantastic she played such a big big part for the first period and a half to, to keep them in because they were coming at her hard and she she stopped so much so I mean she gave them the opportunity to, to get this win well, that's very true. Yeah, um, yeah, no, that's a that's a fair comment. Um, scoring eight goals, I suppose it, it, it might not be likely, but it will fall to to fall to Ruby. But uh, sorry to uh, to Megan even. But um, but yeah, I mean she, she's fantastic, and as you say, without that performance there, I mean that really was the uh, the foundation for the win. Absolutely. But I mean, if you go back to that goal that Becky scored, where she came racing up. Again, I'd still like to know who, who fed her that pass up through the middle because that, that set that whole play up. But then, I mean, it's that, that burst of speed that Becky had and she knew where she was going with that puck and, you know, got that goal, which I, I think really gave the team a lot of momentum then to play the kind of game they played for the rest of it. Yeah, uh, in terms of a storm, Kelly Jamison probably in, in consideration because she looked strong in the first half of a game defensively. Absolutely. And... Uh, Number 77, what's what's her name? Jamie and Dritzi. Yeah, I, I like her too because she did a lot of things where, you know, she, she used body position to, to block players out, which created a lot of space for them. And, and you know, you need players that can play like that. You do. She, she I thought her and Christina McLean always seemed to work well together. As Gloria just dies down in the background, we will wait on air for you to give you the Player of the Game awards. And I got a Christina McLean. So, well, well, if it's not one Canadian, it's the other one. So, uh, they, but they work well together as a pair. And, uh, well, you were close. <laughs> well, she deserved it. Well done. Yeah. So, uh, Christina will take the Play of the Game award. And <laughs> Steph Towns. I mean, the hat trick. Uh, yeah, you can't, you can't deny her that, can you? Um, Fantastic, fantastic for Steph and um, fully deserved and all, all three goals coming uh, in that final period. Well, you talk about a two-way game that she played there offensively and defensively, you know, she was fantastic. So, I mean, yeah, she deserved it. Well done, Steph. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, just looking back to that, that goal, I mean, getting it, that 2-1, getting that, that second goal and retaking the lead so soon after giving up the equaliser was uh, was so important but probably the third goal and just eking out that two goal lead is is probably what uh, was the turning point in the game yeah definitely definitely then then they had they knew they could win this game and, and that's a great feeling to have it's like all right come on team here we go let's final push let's do it sure enough yeah well that brings our broadcast to a close and i do hope you've enjoyed it back home we certainly have a first Beacons win of the season, eight goals to three. I've been Adam Matman, and joining me has been Carl Wood. Thank you, and good night.